You ready to go to work? Great Pyrenees are livestock guards, and they develop this protective instinct due to an unusual childhood. The Pyrenees are born with the goats and are raised up with the goats their whole life. No matter what, they want to be with the goats. It's fun to watch them on the field because they'll go out ahead of the goats and check an area out, and the goats will head out there to where they're at. You see how comfortable the goats are eating and putting their heads down and grazing, and he's got his head up watching everything. Because the Pyrenees pups are raised with the goats from such an early age, hormones influence the dogs to see the goats as their herd. Just as wolves watch over their territories, the Pyrenees vigilantly watch over their herd, protecting them from predators. These Pyrenees have taught me so much. They've taught us how to be around them. I've made mistakes with them with the fact of thinking I was going to bring them in to, to give them some time off and put them in a dog kennel and you know, these blood-curdling howls from them and everything, realizing no matter what, they want to be with the goats. I mean, they're their loyalty to their friends, to their, their goats, is absolutely amazing. Jerry sleeps well at night, knowing his dogs will not leave even one goat up on the mountain alone. When we bring the goats in, we, we count the dogs, not the goats. Because if we have all of our dogs, we know we have all, all of our goats. See how he greets them when they come in? There's no way any any other way of controlling uh, coyotes or lions with these goats would, would work besides these dogs. They're worth their weight in gold, without a doubt. Dogs have protected our herds and homes for thousands of years. Many Roman homes had mosaic panels like this one from the ruins of Pompeii with the Latin inscription Cave Canum, literally meaning beware of dog, proclaiming that a guard dog's on duty. For many of us today, dogs bred originally to be guards are both family members and loving companions. Italy's beautiful mountain lakes and coastline attract millions of swimmers and boaters year-round. If you get into trouble in Italian waters, this is what you want to see. The Protezione Civile, the first and only organization of its kind in the world. The Italian Coast Guard counts on this unique, highly trained volunteer corps of civilians and their dogs to help them keep the water safe. These are Newfoundland Retrievers, water dogs of legendary strength and swimming ability, originally bred to haul in the nets of Newfoundland's fishermen. But it's not just Newfies. Other water dogs, like Labs, are rescue swimmers too. The Protezione Civile was the brainchild of Ferruccio Polegna. 20 years ago, he decided to combine his dog's affinity for the water with an idea for public service and founded the Italian Water Rescue Dog School. In Italy, we have 300 dogs that are ready to work with a Coast Guard. Ferruccio worked closely with the Italian Coast Guard and Air Force Search and Rescue Units to create the curriculum for the program. So far this year, 10 people have been rescued by this unconventional partnership. And this is the first step in getting Italian dogs approved for duty. Ah! Teamwork is key between these civilian volunteers and their dogs. Each team must first be able to swim over a mile. The owner and dog have different skills to master. The person grasps a hold of the drowning victim, and the dog tows them both to safety. The next level of training is to learn to perform a rescue from a speeding boat.
the training program can take as long as three years to complete. The dogs are trained in a gentle and supportive process that develops profound trust in their owners. And they are never forced to do anything they're not willing to do. All this training, trust, and confidence is put to the test when the dogs and their owners face their final exam. It's time for the big leap. If the dog is not ready, it's okay. They're never forced to jump. And there's always next year. Once they've proved their pluck, these citizens and their dogs are ready to work alongside the Coast Guard, patrolling Italy's lakes and beaches from Venice to Sardinia. Whether it's in the water or on land, there are so many ways dogs protect our lives. Who can forget U.S. Airways Flight 1549's crash landing into the Hudson River? A perfectly good plane struck down by a flock of geese. The FAA Wildlife Strike Database has recorded over 108,000 wildlife strikes on commercial and military flights in the United States between 1990 and 2009. But how can we keep flocks of big birds from nesting at our airports and flying into our planes? Just whistle. That'll do, good girl. Come on. This is Dr. Nick Carter, the director of the Bird Strike Control Program. His organization uses border collies, like Vassie here, to do what nothing else can, change the migratory habits of Canada geese. Come on. They're gone, come on. Today, nature calls them to McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita, Kansas. And this is what he and Vassie have come here to protect. What we're doing is introducing a predator back into a predator-free environment. Airports and air bases have walled off their airfields and prevented anybody from coming in, any animals, anybody else. And so birds find in a nice safe haven. And we're basically reintroducing a wolf into that environment. You can chase off birds with anything. I mean, you can, you can go out there and wave your arms up and down and they'll fly away. But the problem is they come right back. And that's because bird DNA doesn't recognize loud noises or giant airplanes as serious problems. We're working with a million years of evolution. They understand what a, a furry thing coming at them from the grass means. It means move and don't come back. That's all we're doing is giving them a choice between a field somewhere else that doesn't have a predator in it and now this field that's close to the base with a predator in it. An evolutionary no-brainer for the birds but a very different story for the dogs. We train the dogs to go against their instinct of going out and around them when we train them to go straighter towards the birds. So we're doing sort of the opposite of herding. We're actually trying to get them to frighten the birds away rather than bring them back slowly like they would with sheep. These are hard lessons for a border collie to learn. 
and only about 5% of the dogs that enter the year-long training program will graduate. The dogs are very, very effective. In fact, they are, they're unbelievably effective. Here, for example, at McConnell Air Force Base, they've had a 30% reduction in bird strikes, and there hasn't been a single damaging strike since we started over three years ago. In Israel, where we've had them working for over a decade now, they've gone from $10.5 million in damage to $8,000 in damage. The dogs can clear tens of thousands of geese and birds off of a mile or two of open land. Uh, I'm not sure I'd want to do the job without the dog because you can have 10 or 20 people try to do the same thing that a dog can do in literally five minutes. They're all about work and that's all they care about. They work for the love of the work itself. It's no wonder that the Border Collie is the fastest growing form of bird control on airports, military air bases, and golf courses. And this completely non-lethal program uses only rescue dogs. So the birds are saved, the dogs have great homes and jobs, and the skies are safer for everyone. All because this dog is smart, adaptable, and willing to tackle any task we point her to. We humans change the size, shape, and heart of our dogs. But the one wolf feature that came through evolution unscathed was the wolf's incredible sense of smell. Wolves, in favorable conditions, can detect a scent up to one and three quarter miles away. And from the earliest days of our relationship with dogs, we've put their noses to work for us. We rely on keen vision to navigate our world, which is fine in open, well-lit places, but the dog's nose can smell what can't be seen. Animal behaviorist Alexandra Horowitz says to know the dog, you must know its nose and the ways it experiences the world. As we see the world, dogs smell the world. You know, we open up our eyes and there's the world visually in front of us. Dogs, you know, come into consciousness and take a big sniff, essentially. So we can kind of imagine that the entire geography of this world is redrawn for them in odors. And every sniff tells a vivid story. You watch a dog's nose for any length of time, they're doing terrific gymnastics. The sniff of a dog is not like our clumsy sniff. It looks like the dog is turning his head to see, but really he's turning his head to sniff first. Whether it's big, round, and the palest pink, or small, pointy, and glossy black, all dogs have highly sensitive noses. Humans are likely to discern one scent at a time, whichever is strongest. However, a dog can sort through a myriad of scents simultaneously. Okay. So if we smell a stew cooking, dogs smell each ingredient of the stew and the cook. What does it smell like, guys? What am I doing over here? Tedder, we got something special for you here. There you go. Oh, yeah, tetters. Oh, what's your favorite? Carrots are really good. Carrots are the best. Aren't they? Aren't they fun? Aren't carrots the best? Does this smell good to you, huh? Good dogs. It's going to be really good. Dogs can move one nostril at a 